Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Studios. This is Security Matters Hawaii. I'm your host, Andrew, the security guy, and I'm here today with Ed Howard. He's come in town from Castle out there in Waimanalo, on Waimanalo side, and uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, the healthcare environment. We're going to be talking about safety and security in the healthcare setting. And uh, Ed, you've been in security a long time, so I always like to start my guests by asking them, what keeps you up at night lately? Lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, because I'm in the healthcare field, obviously that's a concern of mine. Uh, you know, I do oversee 20 hospitals in the Adventist Health System, mm. so I get, um, you know, I get alerts probably every hour of some violent issue that's oh. happening across our 20 hospitals, and and sometimes I, you know, I just lay awake and wondering wonder, you know, what's what's the next big thing that might happen, you know that. So you so. actually. D do stay awake at night. <laughs> sometimes I do. And sometimes I get those calls, you know, Ouch. in the middle of the night as well. Sure. So, yeah. Wow. So give our audience a little sense of, I know you've, been, you've had a long, a long history in security. Give us, uh, if you give your background, if you could, kind of leading up to sure. uh, what you do today. Well, I've had a, a very distinguished and honorable career in law enforcement for 26 years. Um, I was first uh, 10 years with the Honolulu Police Department. And I worked in uh, narcotics uh, eight out of those 10 years, and I was also on a DEA task force for several years. And then I moved over to the state narcotics, and I ran the investigative and enforcement operations for some 16 years, and I retired after 26 years. Wow. So I had a great, great career. Wow. Yeah. You fly around helicopters here looking for the crops and stuff, I remember. <laughs> did, did some of that. Yeah, sure. yeah. Wow. Sure. Right yeah. on. Right on. And, then so, you, and so when you transitioned into the public sector, how, how was that for you? So it's a, that's a one retirement wasn't enough. You thought you'd go get another one? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, we have, we have a great retirement uh, situation for law enforcement officers here in Hawaii. Okay. And I knew I was going to be retiring at an early, early age. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was 46 when wow. I was uh, available to retire. So kind of being that visionary person, I, I knew I wanted to get into another uh, career, so to speak. And um, I, it just so happens I, I was, um, I became the security director at the uh, Castle Medical Center. Okay. So I started off uh, on a whole new um, career in security and in the healthcare uh, specialty, so to speak. Setting sure, I, 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 you know, coming out of law enforcement, which is a very difficult job, and then moving into healthcare, uh, another difficult environment. I don't know if people understand how, uh, you know, all, how how many, uh, you know, it's highly regulated. There's a lot going on in that in a healthcare setting. Uh, what, what what was your your first? Uh, you know your 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 early uh, a sort of opinion, like you know walking in because you didn't you don't have the badge and, and and the gun and the the sort of the control that you kind of have as a law enforcement officer, but you have a lot of the same responsibilities in that particular environment. Right. Well, I mean, you hit it right on the on the head. It was a a, a very big transition for me, and it was a very conscientious decision that I had to make very early on on whether I could actually handle the transition. Oh. Um, a whole different mindset, I was coming in. Uh, people who did bad things in the hospital, I still viewed initially as criminals. Sure. And um, I didn't realize that there were so much mental health issues, mm. true mental health issues, uh, rather than what I would see all the time would be substance abuse and that type of thing. Mm. And uh, just the whole environment was, um, was was very different, so I, I really did have to make a <clears throat> excuse me a con conscious conscious decision to change my mindset and and to look at people as as patients and and be able to manage situations a whole lot different than the way we're trained in law enforcement. Wow! And did do you think the law enforcement training did that in, inform your ability to work there? I mean, did you have to? To have a training program was what was it like when you first started at Castle? I mean, you know, how how did folks deal with the situations that arose there? Well, you know, back when I when I started um, some 14 years ago, you know, it, there's been so much change in in the healthcare setting and the environment where security at that time, um, you know, was a needed needed uh, uh, service that we we had to do, but. Um, it wasn't as special a uh, specialty as it is today because there's a lot more regulations surrounding it and there's a lot more 
issues and uh, situations that we have to deal with. And the biggest one right now um, is violence. Uh-huh. And, and so one of the things that I always tell people when I do my lectures on workplace violence in the healthcare setting mm-hmm. is in my 26 years of law enforcement, I've never seen the type and the amount of violence that I've seen and been exposed to in, in healthcare settings. Wow. It's just mind blowing. Wow. And um, I also compare it to in law enforcement, particularly what I did in narcotics enforcement. You know, we're well equipped, we're well trained, we can anticipate and plan for violence, but in, in our healthcare settings where our security and our staff work, uh, a lot of times it's very unexpected or very oh. dynamic mm-hmm. and very consistent. Yeah. So um, it's if you ask physicians nowadays, what, nowadays what's the top five issues in in healthcare? Violence will always be one of the top five. Now. Wow! Yeah. So we, I would expect him to say something about some disease or some treatment or something. Or insurance. But, but violence or, or insurance, yeah, sure. Yeah, but yeah. violence is going to be on the top of that list. I know you did a talk recently at the at the event we did over at the. Uh, um, Pacific Club, and uh, I, w- I was amazed at the the depth. You know, you don't think uh, necessarily that you know. I, if I go to the hospital, fortunately, I don't have to go very often. Maybe for my physical or whatever annually, but um, you don't think about violence when when I go there. I think of calmness. I think of a helping and caring, nurturing environment, and yet you're getting you're seeing episodes of fairly consistent um, violence. Is that Typical to Castle, you think, or is this typical of the of the industry itself in Hawaii nationally? Oh, it's it's national it's national trends. Uh, you know, when we talk about trends, I'll, I'll give you a really good example. When you when you've got regulatory agencies like for the healthcare, uh, it's it's the Joint Commission, it's Centers for Medicaid Medicare Services (CMS) and uh, OSHA. Okay. When you have these regulatory bodies telling you that you have identified risks of violence in, in the healthcare setting and you need to mitigate those risks. Uh, you've got regulatory agencies now telling you you have a problem. Mm. Um, that's kind of unheard of. Mm, can't so, run and hide. <laughs> right, so it's, it's a trend um, that we've seen. When you've got regulatory agencies telling you have a problem and you need to deal with it, it's eye-opening. So mm. it's, uh, the other thing I, I tell people too is, you know, there's so many associations and uh, professional organizations out there that uh, surround healthcare, and every one of those agencies or organizations, associations, have got some kind of uh, white paper, some kind of training program, you know, some kind of assessment uh, program or process, all just for violence in wow. healthcare. So, you look at those kind of trends. Um, you know, it's here to stay. I think mm-hmm. it's, or at least it's very consistent. And the statistics that we gather across um, uh, annually across our 20 hospitals, you know, we, we have seen in the last three years that that uh, workplace violence relating directly to patients and visitors and family members um, are all consistent and, and upwards in trends. Isn't that something you? It amazed me, I, and I remember from your talk that you know that you get violence, <laughs> violent action. Are you watching for violent action just? from the family of a patient who may be concerned about the, the level of treatment or the type of treatment? Is this, have people, do you think, lost a little respect for the industry? Or, I mean, are they just, emotion carries them away, or? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really been interesting. I've dived into um, this, this, this whole issue of workplace violence in the healthcare setting, and, you know, we, we look at, um, a bunch of risk factors that we have absolutely no control over that come into our healthcare setting. For example, it can be gang activity. Mm-hmm. We have a hospital in Los Angeles with a huge gang uh, presence, 51 gangs in a two mile radius oh. of the hospital. Um, and then we, you know, you've got insurance issues, you've got people that come in because they have no money and no insurance that they use the emergency rooms as their primary care because oh. the law allows them to do it. So these are, you know, like, and I can go on and on with risk factors, but these are risk factors that we have no control over. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a bunch of internal risk factors that we do have control over, and that's where we talk about patient satisfaction, we talk about, um, you know, how we we do treat our patients, and do we communicate with them well, Um, do we offer them um, the pain management that they need, you know, all of these different things mm. uh, really do come into play and, and has an impact on the way people act 
and mm. behave. So uh, trying to balance all of that is, <laughs> is, is kind of crucial. It's more than a one-man job. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Do uh, how, what kind of um, staff training? How, I guess uh, let me ask: How often, um, you know, this, is your staff getting trained? You know, an awareness program. I think because it's easy to slip into being the caregiver, which is what most people I would think enter that industry for, and to let your guard down. Maybe is there a is there a persistent awareness program about the the the, the violence thing? Yeah, absolutely. And as a matter of fact. Um, you know, there's there's landmark legislation with California OSHA right now mm -hmm. is is the only state right now that has mandated a bunch of standards for workplace violence in healthcare. Okay. And we believe National OSHA, as a matter of fact, I, I know that they've held public hearings or they've held hearings on on um, you know setting standards nationally. So we think they're going to take California's framework and 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 pass it on. And uh, probably in the next five, seven years, it'll be a mandate across the nation for healthcare. Uh, as far as the training is concerned, we, we kind of have a two pronged thing that we do. Uh, one is definitely staff awareness. Um, that's huge. And, and the reason for that is a, a lot of the uh, patient caregivers and clinicians that, you know, they go to school, medical school, nursing school, CNA school, mm -hmm. they are they are not exposed to any training or education relating to violence in the workplace oh, in, right, in, in healthcare. Okay, gotcha. So what happens is they come, they come to work, they start going through their orientations, and they start working on the floor, and then a patient throws a tray at them and starts yelling at them, and they're they're totally caught off guard that <laughs> this is so. yeah they're totally caught off guard that this is what happens in the environment mm. so it's up to us um, at each of our sites and this happens across the nation um, that we we expose them to all the risk factors that contribute to violence and we talk to them about you know the things that we can do and the teamwork that we do with security mm. Is there are things that we have to do to help manage. So the big phrase for us in healthcare is managing aggressive behavior. Okay. And there's processes, there's training, um, there's teamwork that all have to sync together. Mm. So it's um, it's quite challenging. Is it, so is uh, while we're on while we're on that topic, are, is it the the newer people that are harder to train or the old ones that are sort of set in their ways? Which employees are most responsive? That's a good point you bring <laughs> up. That's a good point because, you know, during our training, what we have found is the old time physicians, the, the nurses that have been around for 30 years, uh, they're accustomed to this being a part of the, their job. Oh, and, like it's right. normal to have a tray thrown at you. Right, and we've actually, wow. we actually have heard comments and statements like, oh, you know, this is what we deal with, this is, this, this is our job, this is, you know, wow. and we have to change that thinking. I think so. So basically what happens is, you know, people who work in the healthcare uh, industry that are patient caregivers and clinicians, you know, they go in with really good ideas of we're gonna help people and this is what I've chosen to do and and um, they, they just don't see it coming sometimes. So wow. we, we really need, to, we really do educate them, we get them to understand and as a matter of fact, um, just to add this in, which is really interesting, is with the whole Obamacare, you know, everything now is patient satisfaction, is how mm -hmm. we get paid. Our sure. reimbursements are based off of patient satisfaction. So the better patient satisfaction scores we get, the more we'll get, we'll get the reimbursements. Um, but we've also realized that if you, if you do satisfy that patient satisfaction situation, you're also gonna also address violence at the same time. Mm. So there's a lot of strategies out there. There's a lot of consulting companies out there that have all these strategies to boost patient satisfaction. Okay. But then at the same time, we're also realizing that it's also it can help with our, our management of violence as well. Wow. So. We're going to be back in just a minute. We're talking about safety and security in the healthcare setting. Thanks. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just gonna scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here 
on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to the Think Tech Studios. We're here on Security Matters with Ed Howard today, and we're talking about safety and security in a healthcare setting. Uh, Ed, we were talking uh, just a little bit about, you brought up the, the JACO scores and the patient satisfaction scores and how hospitals get reimbursed. Uh, and that's a self-reported by the patient sort of thing. But you're seeing that one of the byproducts of that is if you drive up patient satisfaction, there's maybe less violence, you know, at least from the patients, maybe, I don't know about the, their families and things like that. It, it amazed me when I learned that they're getting violently angry, you know, in a hospital. Right. But No, that's um, abs it's absolutely true. Um, we've seen it in studies and we've, I, I've seen it with my own experience. Wow. So, so when that patient satisfaction is, is driven at a high level, uh, and, and it's, ba it's basic stuff a lot of times too. It's proper communication mm -hmm. and explanations even introducing yourself, mm -hmm. you know, doing things like that to keep uh, patients informed, not uh, over-promising and under-delivering. Mm -hmm. um, it, it keeps people calm. Family members are unique because they want the best service for their family member, sure. right? I, I don't think that's, uh, you know, anything different than you or I and, sure. and our son or daughter or husband, wife in the hospital. So it's kind of human nature stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, simple concepts and principles, but sometimes not always be able to carry out. Um, the last thing a, a family member uh, realizes or cares, so to speak, is this nurse has got five other patients, right? Mm. So it's, it's challenging to, mm. to kind of keep that balance, right? Wow, the, uh, are the, uh, do you have it often where they, because medical terminology, you know, things aren't, aren't familiar to people who maybe be in the hospital for the first time, for example, with a, uh, either for themselves. Do people have a hard time comprehending, even though you've told them, do you, do you watch their face just not absorb the information and then they just get frustrated or? Yeah, yeah, sometimes that happens, but you know, we've got a, a, a lot of really good nurses and you know, physicians out there that do take the time to explain, and that's the key. If they have the time, they can make the time to explain. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing really is, you know, a lot of people hold physicians as almost godlike. Sure, and, especially when you're uh, the one hurting. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, when they have that interaction with them, and there's specific training and, and stuff on this, um, but when they have that interaction with a physician and, it, and it's negative mm. or it's uncaring, you know, that can spike uh, reactions from family members and patients. So mm. I think physicians have come a long way w when it comes to interacting with patients. Mm. So that's, that's big and that has driven up, um, you know, at least for Adventist Health and, and Adventist Castle, it has driven up our patient satisfaction scores with the way our physicians are uh, interacting with patients. Mm. And do you, st uh, they have to get close, uh, I guess maybe as well as the nursing staff, uh, you mentioned, you know, uh, mental illness, and you mentioned some of the behaviors associated with those things. I'm sure you see uh, folks that are, are having problems with drugs, maybe that come in. How do you, how do they give care and also take care of themselves? What's the, do you, do you give some hands-on training for that, or I mean, how, you know, because they've got to get really close, and you know, right. once you're close enough to grab a hold of, that's a, that's a. No, problem. so so good points. Um, um, yeah, we do uh, we do provide certifi uh, certification relating to management of aggressive behavior training. Oh, okay. So that's not only recognizing the the behaviors, but it's also hands-on defensive tactics and movements ah. that you can do. I mean, that's a must. We have to train everybody to do that. Sure. Um, so, you know, we get what we call high-risk patients, and high-risk patients are basically your emergency department, your behavioral health patients. These are patients that, you know, have the most potential to be violent. So we, we look at them differently and as far as safety and security is concerned. Okay. We treat them differently. There's processes in place uh, to ensure that uh, we're as safe as possible. So there's a lot of things that, that, that go into this. Mm -hmm. all, all, all yeah. Trying to do all that without them knowing that you're doing all this around them, that, right? That's true Obviously too. trying to create that, that, that right. a, a caring right. environment nonetheless, but a right. safe environment. Right. Very difficult stuff. So you're, um, you're big in uh, uh, IAHSS as a, as a strong group out here. I think you've got 40, 50, maybe more members than that. I know so I've been to some of the meetings. That's a large right. group. Um, what's the focus? Does this, do folks go there to get training as well? It's the, um, 
Uh, what 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 kind of what uh, what sort of um, I guess um, services do the members you know get by right. being being part of IHSS in Hawaii? So IHSS stands for International Association for Healthcare Security and Safety. It's a um, national international organization, and it's uh, specifically for healthcare security, safety, emergency preparedness um, professionals. And we have a chapter here in Hawaii, which I'm, I'm the chapter chairman of. Okay. And uh, yeah, we have about 40 plus uh, members, all from the various hospitals and other healthcare uh, providers. And um, you know, we get together for meetings and we do provide training, uh, a lot of networking and sharing because a policy that works at Queens Medical Center mm. can very well work at, you know, ah, polymomy. Sure. And so we have that tight networking where we where we can communicate with one another. And then, then just a lot of blasts of information mm. out there that I, I, I happen to get uh, quite a bit of nationally as well. So okay. it kind of keeps us all in the know. Good deal. So it's a, it's a great organization. And again, it's very, very specific to, to what we do in healthcare. Is, are there um, like, like the FAA has like a no fly list. <laughs> Do you have, uh, are there people that everyone knows if they show up in your ER, they're a problem? Is, is there that sort of, because it's a small enough community in Hawaii, I would think. Yeah. No, to be honest with you, we don't share that type of information specifically oh, because there are Probably, some federal yeah. privacy That's rules right. surrounding that. That's right. think of that. Um, so, yeah, we don't really have a database or anything <laughs> that, we, that we share on stuff like that. Um, but... We, we, do, we do know what the risks are, and mm. we, we talk about that quite a bit. And, and, and it's always interesting to know how, like, triple, Tripler Medical Center deals with their physical environment okay. and, and how others do, you know. Mm. So we do talk about those kind of things. We share about those things. And, and I will say that one, one of the important things that we, we use to help mitigate our risks are security systems. Security systems are big oh. for us. So... You know, your access control and your CCTV cameras, mm -hmm. video surveillance, uh, our infant protect, uh, protection systems, our duress alarms, mm -hmm. our emergency communications and phones, mass communication. So we use mm -hmm. all of these a things. A lot of technology in a hospital. A lot of technology <laughs> as well as, uh, again, can't overemphasize the processes that we have to put in place to, to, to manage certain situations in patients. Wow. And is, um, so has IHSS also been official? I'm, I'm sure that some of that's evolving. You know, as you talk about, we didn't used to get graded by the Fed to get reimbursement. Now you're graded for patient care. Have you seen that impact? Has it changed or, or is there a more frequent training or better training? What's your, what's your take on, on the industry and it's, uh, you know, where it's going in the future? No, it's, it's, there's definitely more awareness for sure hmm. and training. And when you have the regulatory agencies now really looking at if you if you want to call it on an isolated topic, looking at workplace violence a lot more closely than mm. they did five, six, seven years ago, I mean, there's expectations now that you you need to have active shooter plans, you need to have uh, workplace violence plans. When like seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, when a surveyor would show up from the Joint Commission or CMS Department of Health, they didn't automatically ask for those things. I see. You know, so now they're really scrutinizing your security management plan. And they're looking at things that you're doing to help mitigate these identified risks, which is a standard in, in the healthcare setting. Mm. So the environment's improving a lot. That's, it's uh, amazing it sort of took that long, you might say. I, I guess it was swept violence in the violence at any place. I guess it's kind of kept under the carpet. It's hard to recruit people to work if they think they're going to be working in a violent place. And right. I'm still amazed it's not part of maybe the curriculum for the doctors in their their medical training, you think they'd have Absolutely, a, yeah. at least near the end, maybe not or too early, you scare them off, but right. you know, we need doctors, but right. uh, it right. seems like some of this training might be good to, to have along the way. Yeah, they definitely need to have some classes uh, so, so they can see what they're getting involved in in that, in that healthcare setting for sure. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, um, we have, I think, gotten a great picture on the healthcare setting and what safety and security is about. So if you're out there and you're visiting a hospital, try to be a part of the solution when you're there. Um, ask for types of communication if you're not getting it. Make sure you're talking uh, and getting the kind of service that, that you want. And uh, remember that those folks have a lot going on. You're not the only patient. And your kin folk are not the only folks there. Um, and try, try to be helpful and try to be aware um, in a healthcare setting if, you're, if you have to be engaged in that. All right? Thank you so much.
We'll see you next week on uh, Security Matters Hawaii. Aloha.